Hello, everyone. I'm Peggy Sundstrom, and I'm your host for this uh, research symposium session that's entitled Interpersonal and Intrapersonal Intelligences as Viewed by Academics and Human Resource Professionals, a Qualitative Comparative Study. And this presentation will be by Joe Kumbi. I've had the pleasure of knowing Joe for many years now, so I'm delighted to be the host for his meeting. I'd like you to know that while Joe is presenting, uh, you will be muted so that we keep concentration on Joe, but we have the chat function open at the bottom of the screen. And if you'd like to post a question or, uh, or make a comment, you can certainly use that chat function. Joe will be addressing those questions from the chat room in the last five minutes of the presentation. And we will be recording this presentation and those recordings will be made available in June. If you've registered for this um, session, you'll, be, you'll get an email that tells you how to find that presentation. So let me just take a couple minutes here to introduce Joe. Dr. Joe Kumbi is a 2019 Ashford University graduate and he graduated with a PhD in organizational development and leadership. He's a member of the Golden Key and Tau Upsilon Alpha Honor Societies. Joe is a, is a native of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but he now resides in Denver, Colorado. He has 16 years of successful teaching experience and 16 years of entrepreneurship as well. Joe has a real passion for learning and helping others in all that he does. His current research involves workforce readiness and ways to, defi to define it as a very pertinent topic right now. So Joe, thank you for being here today and please proceed with your presentation. Dr. Sundstrom, thank you very much and thank you to everyone here at Ashford University for, for hosting this symposium and everything and making this possible. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to go into the topic that I, I have um, really dealt a lot with here involving interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligence and how they're actually how they're actually measured in the workforce and i did take a look at ac academics and human resource professionals and a quick caveat about that you know i used um interpersonal intelligences as defined by dr howard garner in 1983 because he was the first one to include both inter and intrapersonal intelligences in his overall um definition of you know, intelligences and how, how someone learns and so certainly expresses that as uh, they, they move forward in their lives. And certainly we, I, did, I did a qualitative comparative study this time because qualitative research does give participants uh, their voices so their voices can be heard. And certainly in this study, both academics and human resource professionals needed to be brought together to see if consensus could be reached on a working definition of this phenomenon. Now, the problem that I dealt with here was that while workforce turnover was high at 13%, certainly with HR professionals planning to um, hire new workers in the next year, we did notice that 44.3% of the workforce, that is non-college bound high school graduates, were not being um, offered career-based employment um, due to a lack of basic skills, and personal attributes needed for workforce success. And specifically, they didn't have the ability to show that they actually do have the interpersonal intelligences, that's how they get along with others, and intrapersonal intelligences, how they monitor themselves uh, in order to be workforce ready. So this was a problem, certainly, that this study endeavored to start dealing with. Next, I use a qualitative comparative study design simply because we needed to give voices to the participants. And certainly with inter and intrapersonal intelligences, we confined this study to these two intelligences and their possible relationships to the phenomenon known as workforce readiness. Certainly when you take a look here, we, we note that qualitative uh, research is a constructivist design and it gives voices, as I said, to the study participants. Next, the sample population I chose was five HR professionals and five high school curriculum coordinators in the South Carolina area. And I want to thank them for being a part of this. There's more people to thank here than I possibly could, could uh, do in a, a short session like this, but I do thank them. Um, the sample size was appropriate because it was important to interview enough 
interview participants so that saturation could be achieved. And for that, I used Johnny Saldana's 2013 definition of saturation. That is, saturation is achieved when, with subsequent interviews, we're not learning anything new. So, first, we began with a quantitative portion of this study. Even though it's a qualitatively heavy study, I started with a quantitative section. But uh, working with Dr. Branton Shearer, I, I administered the Multiple Intelligences Developmental Scales, or MIDAS. This scale was something that was, it's the only measure of multiple intelligences so far that has been found to be valid in a large factor analysis. So I felt comfortable using this. And we started by asking the, the HR professionals and school curriculum coordinators to go ahead and take this instrument at, before we ask them the interview questions that go along with the qualitative portion of the study. And from a quantitative standpoint, these are the results. One thing that is noteworthy here is that in the interpersonal intelligence, our professionals scored at a minimum of 47, a maximum of 92, with a mean of 71.14, and a standard deviation of 12.7. For intrapersonal intelligences, they scored at a minimum of 46, a maximum of 83, a mean of 65.36, with a standard deviation of 12.8. These are noteworthy because they're in keeping with previous administrations of the MIDAS, so we felt comfortable that these were valid results. Next, I asked these professionals asynchronous interview questions by email. And I recruited, as I said, five of each, and we coded their responses after, after approval by the IRB here at Ashford University and committee as A1 to A5 for academics and H1 to H3 for human resource professionals. I conducted analysis of this using Saldana's 2013 hand coding method and then in vivo to catch any outliers that may exist. This analysis showed six soft skills or inter and intrapersonal intelligences these professionals viewed as being components of workforce readiness. Our human resource professionals agreed that communication, teamwork, goal setting, and conflict resolution were important interpersonal intelligences to have, along with the intrapersonal intelligences of ethics, perseverance, and integrity. In our, our um, academics, the academics showed, uh, showed that collaboration, teamwork, and conflict re resolution were important interpersonal intelligences to have with the inter intrapersonal intelligences of empathy and time management. So further, further interview results that are interesting here is um, Specifically, A4, Academic 4 noted that in turn, intrapersonal intelligences are vital to the, to the culture and climate of my organization. Participant A5 noted that if inter and intrapersonal intelligence assessments were implemented more frequently in her, his or her school, there will be a noticeable improvement. These curriculum professionals also pointed out that other programs were being incorporated in the schools, such as the Leader in Me program and culturally relevant pedagogy. All these are good programs, but they felt that they the more emphasis on inter and intrapersonal intelligences were needs so that the graduates would be able to enter the workforce immediately following graduation. An interesting comment that came from the HR professionals. Uh, one of our HR professionals, and actually they, as a group, they noted that irrespective of what pre-employment testing is done or implements in things implemented, that the most important determinant they found is whether or not the potential employee is a fit for their organization, a very subjective sort of idea. Further interview results from the qualitative interviews, um, curriculum coordinators also pointed out that the everyone men's, wins mentality in school and, and the influence of pop culture and technology's reduction of face-to-face -face meetings uh, were major problems that, that interfered with students developing their inter and intrapersonal intelligences. Um, one participant no, noted that low school budgets and extensive curriculums that are in place already were reasons that these two, reasons that these two intelligences were not better emphasized in South Carolina high schools. The, an interesting point here, again, is that HR professionals noted that um, social media and relationship building by text, messenger, and computer 
are major barriers to young people developing their inter and intrapersonal intelligences as they normally would. So to synthesize these qualitative interview results, um, based upon the responses from these professionals, it is noted that a consensus exists among them that inter and intrapersonal intelligences are needed requisites for workforce success. The term workforce readiness, secondly, needs more definition. Um, you know, these professionals pointed out things like communication, teamwork, goal setting, and conflict resolution are important interpersonal intelligences to possess, and ethics, perseverance, integrity, and empathy are important intrapersonal intelligences to have. But certainly this will help us to begin to define the phenomenon known as workforce readiness. However, Due to low budgets and other educational priorities, these are not currently being emphasized in South Carolina schools. Interestingly enough, if they were being addressed, interviews with HR professionals have indicated that they rely upon other criteria, including potential employee fit for their organization, and in some cases electronic means to screen candidates for potential employment. And the curriculum and HR professionals who participated in the study did cite social media, electronic communication, and computers as a major interference with prospective employees' inter- and intrapersonal intelligences. So, implications we have for, for theory development and future research. Because inter- and intrapersonal intelligences are needed in the workforce, this study was the first sort of step to ascertain how they're being addressed in South Carolina schools and in the workforce. Additionally, I presented a first step towards defining the phenomenon known as workforce readiness in a useful manner. And certainly current research lacks a definition of exactly what workforce readiness is or how to assess it to tell the prospective employees are ready for career-based employment. Implications for our practice. Certainly in this study, I found the MIDAS is a useful instrument to measure inter and, and intrapersonal intelligences and the professionals who took this instrument agreed it could be useful in their practices because neither inter nor intrapersonal intelligences are being adequately addressed in South Carolina schools or the work workforce. And this instrument could be useful in both educational and workplace settings. Finally, implications for future research. Based upon my study's findings, a quantitative study to determine the extent to which the concepts presented here correlate with the definition of workforce readiness from a cause effect standpoint is needed. And certainly this will be the needed development of a useful or pragmatic definition of the, of the phenomenon known as workforce readiness. And with that in mind, I want to thank you for attending and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. that um, I had a question about okay. the, could you not hear me? I'm sorry. No, I'm good, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I apologize. Um, I had a question about the, some of your, um, your research. I know that both inter and intrapersonal um, competencies are important. Did you get a sense of a difference between the educators and the HR professionals of an emphasis on one over the other? So actually, um, they, they, they viewed both as being important. Um, they didn't, you know, in, in these interviews, they didn't specify that one was actually more important than the other, but, but in this one found that both of these intelligences are very important or prospective employees to have. Okay, so it's really, it's that combination that's, that, that's really important for, for career readiness. You mentioned that career readiness hadn't been well defined. Who should be defining that? Well, you, you know, I do believe that, that from, a, a, from a standpoint of career readiness, that, it, that it's a responsibility of, of certainly, you know, both, both we researchers here, but also academics, and human resource professionals, because human resource professionals are going to be the ones using this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it, was kind of, it was very interesting to find that irrespective of which of the many 
employment tests we have in the world today, including things like panel interviews and what have you, that when it comes down to a hiring decision, they're still making hiring decisions based on whether they feel the employee, the, pro, the prospect is, has a fit for their organization. Very subjective. Right. Yeah, and, and I found that interesting because we, we know from research that we form impressions very quickly when we're speaking with somebody. And, and it's, it would be interesting, I think, to find out whether or not that sense of fit is, in fact, directly related to some of these uh, particularly intrapersonal, um, intrapersonal competencies that people might have. It would give me a sense that you fit in my organization. And I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you totally. You know, certainly that needs more more research to go in to go into exactly why it is. And I and I do believe that it it, it gets to be a habit. Um, you know, like many things do. And and I'm I, my my sense from that was that these they, these HR professionals have done this forever. In fact, one noted um, that her techniques had seldom failed, and so she did the same thing every time. Right. Which I found right. very interesting. Yeah, well, I, I, that that doesn't that doesn't surprise me because if it works, then she may not be able to define exactly how she's determining fit. Dr. Bowman asked an interesting question. She said, given current limitations in the South Carolina schools and the agreement on importance, how could HR professionals work to develop intra and interpersonal uh, intelligences in their own workplaces? So if it's not going to come from the schools. What do HR folks do in the organizations? Right. You, you know, um, a number, a number, a great question, by the way, a number of them have tried to use um, on the job training and in, in service. But so far, those those um, the results of those have been less than stellar. So I think it goes back to to exactly how this how the student is taught in, in either high school or some sort of post secondary sort of schooling. Um, to help him or her develop these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's almost like it develops over time. It isn't something I can put you in a four-hour classroom and teach you. Right. <laughs> right. Teach you and, how to have communication skills, yeah. And, and actually, uh, so some of America's top employers have, have tried to do that and with very little success. A follow-up question to that is, how would you envision removing that barrier? Well, that barrier work in, in the in the classroom i would I, I would believe that curricular change would would be a way to do this and to and to actually to to include this in the high school and or vocational school training as as, as sort of the same way that basic skills are addressed these days certainly mm -hmm. the intern and personal intelligence should be addressed in the same way because yeah. they're very important but one one of your uh, a fellow doctoral student asks, what software did you use for data analysis? Sure, I, I, I use I use hand coding, and then I use in vivo to to um, catch any outliers that may that may have existed. Right. Another follow up question uh, that I find fascinating is, in fact, are instructors in high schools and post secondary programs. Uh, qualified? Are they prepared to actually teach these intra and interpersonal intelligences? Well, I, I can speak from the from the standpoint of having been a high school professional for 16 years, and I can tell you that uh, most probably don't receive direct instruction in colleges of education to 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 adequately address these. And I do believe that more more training on that end would help these be more of a more of a well addressed. Uh, um, topic in schools. Yeah, a comment that uh, was put up by uh, one of our participants is that it would be interesting to compare the work that you've done, Joe, with the NACE competencies. Uh, and NACE is a set of competencies that Ashford University is using to begin mm -hmm. to model its uh, institutional learning outcomes. So it might be an interesting um, follow-up for you is to take a look at those NACE competencies. And I'm happy to share that with you after this presentation, Definitely. because I think that's the direction that a lot of higher education is going. And I think your study fits into this like hand and glove, but mm -hmm. there's some differences in terminology. Right. And, and, and Dr. Sutton, I, I tell you one thing that, that this, I, I view this as a starting point because it can go so many different ways. 
and be applicable to so many different situations. And I'd love to take a look at that, really would. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a comment made by one of the participants who says that she's trying to teach this to uh, students who are functioning below sixth grade after leaving high school. And she's finding it difficult to get students to understand uh, what is needed for success. So there may be also a gap between what students perceive they need and what the workplace is telling them that they need. So it could be a personal awareness issue as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and certainly, you know, I would, I would encourage her to, to keep on, you know, with, with it because I can tell you that, you know, basically by, by exploring these, it's going to help students. Certainly you may have to use different techniques, different methods and materials to help students who are functioning at a different level, but certainly they can understand the ability to work in groups or work with others as a team and then manage themselves. You know, I had the, experience, the great experience of teaching job training before with a group similar to this, and they, they were able to learn. Great, great. Well, another question came up. It said, at what point in the educational process should development of these skills be started? When do we start to introduce these skills? I believe I would start in the, in, in the elementary school grades, you know, to, because certainly, you know, the idea of teamwork or in, inter, interpersonal intelligence goes all the way back. And these are biologically based. Dr. Gardner found these intelligences to be biologically based. So there was, the, the, the idea would be that the person is born with them. So they could start developing them from any point. Intrapersonal intelligence, same thing. How to, how to monitor your own self and certainly regulate your own behaviors. Ah, uh, yeah, good. Another question is, did you find um, that the problem in, in lack of intra and interpersonal intelligence is to be connected to socioeconomic levels? Um, not necessarily, because certainly, um, it, you know, it, it became, you know, certainly we, we have, we have a, a number of different socioeconomic levels in, in, the, in the population that I chose to, to um, go to in South Carolina. So, some are lower, some are not. It's a good mixture. So, but I, the, 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 lack of, the lack of instruction in intern and tri-personal intelligence was pervasive across all, um, all levels. Great. That, that fascinating. I, I find your study fascinating, uh, you. Joe. Thank you again. I believe we are at the end of our time. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody who participated. Thank you for your questions. Um, and uh, Joe, you might want to scroll through the chat just to pick okay. up some of the other comments. Sure will. Uh, and look for a link to a recorded, um, a recorded version of this presentation. Thanks, everybody, and have a great, great rest of your day.